This scene contains over 100 robotic tentacles, and perhaps in a few moments you will start wondering how much patience I had and how much time I spent not only to model but also animate them. This video answers both questions because today we'll be generating robotic tentacles procedurally. If you follow the workflow demonstrated in this video, you will have control over the density of the tentacles. You can change the length and radius of the tentacles, but the most impressive part is that you can easily animate them. The interesting thing is that this approach is not limited to only generating tentacles. In fact, with the same principles, you can generate hair, either realistic, stylized, or even demonic. This is how I have structured this tutorial. In the first step, we generate some organic looking curves on a surface. In the second step, we animate them. And in the final step, we mechanize them by adding links at equal intervals. Once the tentacles are generated, as a bonus, I will show you how to connect geometry node variables to shader nodes and set up a material that will really bring your model to life. I know some viewers like to follow along with the video, so in order to make sure that your results are the same as mine, I'm going to use a simple icosphere to showcase this workflow. Aside from this icosphere, I'm going to add one other object as the container for the tentacles. This container can be any object, like a simple plane. And once you've added this to your scene, make sure it's selected, then go to its modifiers tab, add a geometry node modifier and give it a proper name. Also, for a moment, let's switch over to the Materials tab and create a new material for the tentacles. Finally, this is the object that I plan to use later down the line as the links of the robotic tentacles. And with that out of the way, let's head over to the Geometry Nodes workspace where we are, by default, given a Group Input and a Group Output node. The Group Input node contains mesh data for the plane we added earlier. We don't need this. So delete it, and in its place, bring up the Add menu by pressing Shift A and use the search field to bring in an Object Info node, set it to Relative, and have it point to the object where we want to attach the tentacles, which in our case is the icosphere we created at the start. We effectively now have a second copy of the icosphere, which constitutes the surface where the tentacles will be generated. So, once again, bring up the Add menu and using the search field, drop in a quadratic BZA node, a distribute points on faces node, and an instance on points node. It's important that the start of the BZA curve is at zero coordinates and the middle and end points are along the Z axis. This creates curve lines that are instanced on the surface of the icosphere at locations generated by the distribute points node. The key takeaway here is that by connecting the rotation component on the distribute points node to that of the instance points node, we are making the line stand outward from the surface of the icosphere. While the parameters on the BZA node control the length of the lines, the ones on the distribute node determine how dense they are placed on the target surface. Now, to give the line some volume, let's make use of a Realize Instances node, a Curve Circle node, and a Curve to Mesh node. The Realize Instances node takes each curve line, realizes it, meaning that it turns it into an individual curve that can twist and turn independent from other curves, then passes it over to the Curve to Mesh node, where it's given a circular profile. To take the straight tentacles we currently have and twist and turn them, let's add a Noise Texture node, a Map Range node with its typeset of vector, and a Set Position node. Here, the Noise Texture node generates continuous random values ranging between 0 and 1. These values are then remapped to a range of negative 1 to 1, which are then passed over to the Set Position node to deform the curve lines. But these deformations have a side effect, where if we look closer, we can see that the base of the curve lines are no longer attached to the surface of the icosphere. 
Fortunately, all we need to fix this is a vector math node with its operation set to scale, a map range node, and a spline parameter node. The spline parameter node is, in my opinion, one of the most creatively liberating nodes in our toolbox. We'll be using it more down the line, and despite its various applications, in essence, it's quite basic as the factor output simply gives us a value that starts from zero at the base of a curve and increases to one towards the tip. With this in mind, we pass this factor output through the map range node and hand over the result to the scale node to firstly eliminate the effect of the random offset at the base of each curve line, and secondly, amplify the random offset at the tip. As a result, not only have we fixed the problem of detached bases, but now we have a useful new parameter on the map range node that allows us to adjust the amplitude of the twists and turns. But the side effects of the random offset don't end here. These random deformations have another, less noticeable consequence, which is that they stretch and compress the curve lines, meaning that the tentacles are no longer equal in length, and while there might be cases where we don't see this as a problem, nevertheless, it's still worth knowing how to fix it. This, fortunately, is a rather simple task. For the fix, we only need two nodes, a trim curve node, which we make sure to set to length, and a resample curve node. Simply put, the trim curve node trims each tentacle to the given length, while the resample node makes sure each curve contains enough sample points. Soon enough, you'll see that these sample points are used to place the robotic links. But before we get into that, let's have a quick look at the most important parameters we have in our current setup. There are four main parameters here worth keeping track of. The scale value on the noise texture node lets us adjust the frequency of the twists and turns along each tentacle. With this, you can drastically change the appearance of a model. The first map range node allows us to set the amplitude of the twists and turns. This amplitude gives a model more or less energy. The second map range node lets us set an overall growth direction for the curve lines. With this overall direction, you can add a sense of movement to your model, making it seem as if moving through water or standing in the wind. And finally, the trim curve node lets us keep all the tentacles at equal length. You can use this value to create a growing animation. And speaking of animations, let's quickly animate our tentacles. To do this, bring up the Add menu and use the Search field to drop in a Vector Math node, a Scene Time node, a Position node, and a Simple Math node. Without going into too much detail, the trick here is to set the operation of the Vector Math node to multiply add and connect it to the normal vector given by the distribute points node. This, combined with the scene time node and the position node, makes the noise texture move outward along the curve lines, which in turn gives the tentacles a natural wave animation. The only parameter here is the value on the multiply node, which lets us change the speed of the animation to make the waves move faster, or even in the opposite direction. This brings us to the point where in the next step, we can add the robotic links to our tentacles. Since we can use this current setup to generate and animate not only tentacles, but also things like hair, it's a good time to place it into a node group, which will make it easier to use later on in other projects. This will also free up space on the screen as we are about to add the robotic links onto these curves. So, simply select these nodes, then bring up the Add menu and under the Group options, select Make Group. This will create a new node group that contains our selected nodes and move us into that group. Keep in mind that you can press Tab to move in and out of this node group, and from the outside, it's a good idea to rename it to a more descriptive one. Now, to place the links along each tentacle, add a Join Geometry node and follow that up with an object info node, a curve tangent node, an align Euler to vector node, and an instance on points node.
The object info node is where we select the link object to be placed along the tentacles, while the combination of the curve tangent and align Euler nodes make sure each link is oriented in the same direction as its parent tentacle. This gives us another opportunity to, once again, make use of the spline parameter node, this time to taper the tentacles towards the tip. So, aside from a spline parameter node, add a map range node and set its type to vector. Now adjust the end values on the map range node so that the link scaled down towards the tip of the tentacles. By now, if you're not already a fan of the spline parameter node, you will be by the end of this section where I'm going to show you how to transfer geometry node data to shader nodes to add visual effects to the tentacles. For this, aside from the spline parameter node, we also need a store named attribute node and a set material node. The store named attribute node is what enables us to transfer values from geometry nodes to the material. Make sure you give this attribute a unique name. From now on, using this unique name, this attribute is accessible to any material that we assign to the tentacles. That's all we need in a geometry node space. The rest happens in the shading workspace, where we will go ahead and add an attribute node, a wave texture node, and a map range node. The attribute node is where we recall the attribute we created a bit earlier. Please make sure to use the same unique name, otherwise this will not work. To get a better view of what we are doing here, let's quickly go back to the Geometry node workspace and temporarily disable the links. We can quickly do this if we select the Instance on Points node and mute it by pressing M. This shows us the energy lights we have generated along the tentacles. We can control the frequency and the length of these lights using the parameters on the wave texture and the map range nodes. And to animate these lights, we only need a math node with its operation set to multiply and a value node where we type in the tag symbol followed by the keyword frame. Which gives us this. And if we bring the joints back, we have the final result. Now, if you want to learn more about procedural methods in Blender, click here for another video. And if you have any requests for future tutorials, let me know in the comments. As for this one, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.